If you want a website with complex user interfaces that works with dynamic data, you may be playing around with client-side rendering, which is awesome. When implemented correctly, client-side rendering can be super powerful, but things can quickly get out of hand and slow down your pages, notably on mobile. Luckily in AMP, implementing client-side rendering without sacrificing performance can be easy, especially if you work with the AMP list component. I'm using it to render hiking data on my blog homepage, and I've combined it with the powers of AMP bind to allow users to filter by location. But the list of hikes is pulled in from a remote endpoint, which can slow things down, as it requires an additional network request. So today, I'm going to speed things up by using a very special AMP list ability, initializing an AMP bind state on page load. In most cases, AMP bind does not evaluate state on page load and must wait for a user interaction. But the AMP list component is quite talented. It allows a prefix in the SRC attributes value that can reference JSON I've directly inlined in my page's HTML. So the first thing I'll do is copy the JSON configuration I was fetching from my remote endpoint and paste it inside my AMP state element. Then I'll update the AMP list SRC with that special prefix, AMP state. And then I'm going to specify the ID of the AMP state element holding the hikes data, which is hikes list. And awesome, everything still works. However, my bound SRC attribute points to a different state called hikes in city. And I would rather not maintain two states if I don't have to. And I don't. On my server side, I've set up an API to filter the hikes by city. I'll bind the call to my API to the hikes list state. Then I'll change the bound SRC value on AMP list to hikes list. Finally, I'll update the action on the select element, which used to set the hikes in city state. Now it changes the value of the variable city in the hikes list state. That value is used in the API call, and changing it triggers a request. When the filtered JSON is returned, it updates the state telling AmpList to render the results. And well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you know what you want to see in future episodes, drop suggestions in the comments below.